Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is Friday, September 20th, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to start talking a little bit about the Florida job. There's been a lot of talk around it. Well, when is Billy Napier going to be let go, or is he going to be let go this year? Who would possibly take over for him in the interim, and then who would take over for him in the long term? And then finally, how good of a job is it actually? And I'll break down all of my thoughts on that in the first segment. Then we'll get into a little bit of a week four whip around. We had an absolute splattering yesterday by South Florida against App State. We also have a number of other games coming up this week that I want to break down for you guys that are going to be a ton of fun one way or the other. Then we'll get into some players and coaches under a microscope going into week four. I think the guy that takes the cake might be the offensive coordinator for Michigan, and I'll break down exactly what I mean with that. Then we'll get into my best bets for this week. Already off to a rough start. Miss out on uh, yesterday's by literally a missed extra point but hoping we can bounce back got eight more for you guys today and then we'll finish up with a little bit of a weekend wrap up all the headlines that didn't necessarily have a chance to get to we will get to today but before we jump in I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen we can have a fun back and forth here is to use that super chat feature at the bottom of the chat on the sports network page you can click that little dollar sign add your name add any comment question you'd like it will pop up on the screen and we can have a fun back and forth here definitely want this to be very interactive so utilize that and we can have a fun back and forth show here but let's go ahead and jump right in here because a lot is happening down at Florida right about now and a lot of it is happening behind the scenes and there are some fans that are getting a little bit restless about what is going on with Billy Napier going forward I said earlier this week I did not think he was going to be on the flight to Starkville I think he's probably getting on that flight right about now. So he absolutely will be on that flight. He absolutely will be on the sideline coaching them this upcoming weekend. And people have some questions, uh, a number of different questions, mainly... When is all of this going to happen? You know, when is he going to be let go if he is let go? Because I think there's a number of things that need to be figured out behind the scenes before that's a real possibility. That being said, I'd be a little bit surprised if he was to make it through the year. I'd be a little bit surprised, especially if he was to make it through December, uh, through the end of the year, and then a couple of days after that. So we'll see what happens here. Obviously, quite a ways to go in the season, and we'll see how Florida can handle it. But Why is he not? uh, Why is it hard to let him go right now? Why is it difficult to pull the trigger right now instead of uh, having to pull the trigger down the road? And the biggest one is a lot of stuff that has very little to do with football, frankly. So Florida has a interim president right now, Kent Fuchs, who was actually their president and then someone else came in, didn't necessarily work out. So he is taking over in the interim while they find someone else. That is something that is going to put this at a very, very tough spot. Now, having someone that has been the president before definitely does help this, helps it kind of push it along, and you have people behind the scenes that know him and kind of want to get this done. That being said, you're likely not making one of these big-time hires with an interim president in place. That's just probably not going to happen. And I think there's a number of different things that kind of go into this, but at the end of the day, I think, here, let me see what Anthony's got to say. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think there's a there's a lot of different pressure around this program, and I think a lot of it has very little to do with this program, right? It's a lot to do with what Miami is doing and what Mario is doing, and then over at Florida State, although this year has been downright terrible, uh, there's a program that is obviously moving in a better direction than Florida has been recently, so... There's a lot of stuff that goes into this, you know. It's not just what about uh, about what's going on at Florida, but there are tons of hurdles over there too. I can promise you that, Anthony. But the other one is Florida's AD Scott Strickland is a guy that is just on the hot seat right now. He is someone that it tends to be thought, at least around Gainesville, that once that interim president is out and a new president is in he will no longer be uh, the AD there. So you probably don't want him making your college football head coaching hire if he's going to be out the door by the time you have a new interim president. So it's one of those things where I don't know how much stuff has to happen behind the scenes or on the football field for this to happen, but there's a reality where Billy Napier loses every single game going forward And their hands are just kind of tied. They can't necessarily do anything by the end of the year. And then there's also other parts of this, which is Billy Napier has built a staff that is just not good enough. I think a lot of Florida fans understand that, and it's been something that has been on full display for a number of other big-time games, including that Miami game to start the season. 
there's not a guy that is going to be able to take over this team and have the same effect that you want them to have. Now, they do have people that are very experienced in the head coaching space or just in general um, in the world of football, like Ron Roberts. They hired him as the defensive coordinator. It hasn't necessarily been all that pretty, but he is also a very old school type coach. He is a Nick Saban type coach where he's going to get on his guys a little bit doesn't necessarily bode boat itself well for a guy that's taking over halfway through the year and needs his guys to rally around him. It's not necessarily easy to do if you're going to be that type of approach. doesn't necessarily mean it's the wrong approach. It just means usually those coaches that do that have been at that program for quite some time and have built up some of that equity that Ron Roberts might not have around Gainesville right now. And then you have Dan Enos, who's also on the staff, he probably wouldn't be able to take over either. He's a special assistant right now. Uh, getting him all the way up to head coach would be very tough, and he's also been fired twice as an offensive coordinator. So you're in a spot where not only is the behind-the-scenes an absolute nightmare, so you can't necessarily fire this guy because you don't have a real president right now. You might not even real ha- have a real AD right about now. And then on the uh, in the side of what's going on in the football program, Who's going to take over for him? Who's going to be the guy that takes over for him for the rest of the year? Now, I do think there are options outside of the program that could come in possibly, but it's going to be a lot harder to figure that out, and you're going to want to wait a lot longer to do that because you're going to have to get someone to sign on for multiple months of their life. It's going to be really interesting how that works out, but frankly, I think Billy Napier could lose every single game going forward, and they would still be in the same position where they would be asking, can we really fire him right now? And then the other part of this that I want to talk about real quickly is kind of just who would they hire after this? Who is the person that they would go after? Who is the person that they would touch on after this goes down? And the name that's always popped up is Lane Kiffin. I think everyone understands that this is probably one of the biggest names in the coaching market, particularly one that is not necessarily at what we call a destination school. Maybe Ole Miss is for Lane Kiffin, but at least gener- at least historically, this has not been a destination school. Lane Kiffin is trying to change that in a lot of ways, has done an incredible job over there. And I think one of the things that kind of gives me pause about this, I think he would be incredible over there. I don't know if Florida is, I don't want to put it that way. I don't know if Florida has the facilities right this second to where he is willing to jump ship from what he has at Ole Miss. I think what he has at Ole Miss is really, really incredible. And I think what he has at Ole Miss is consistency and stability that probably wouldn't be at Florida. And also, the NIL facilities are not necessarily where they are at uh, at Florida that they need to be, and there definitely aren't where Old Misses is. So that's the real question. Are you willing to meet Lane Kiffin halfway? Are you going to have all the things in place where he's leaving a job where hypothetically he can compete for SEC titles, he can compete in the playoff, and he can possibly compete for national titles? Why would he give all that up if there's not reassurances of everything at Florida has been fixed in the terms of NIL, in terms of having a real president, in terms of having an AD that's going to be there for a long time? All of that stuff has to be figured out, or Lane Kiffin has really no reason to leave where he's at. And then the other person that people have talked about is Eli Drinkwitz. And I think this is somewhat of a similar situation now. Missouri is a little bit below Ole Miss, at least in my mind, but it's definitely making its way up the ranks right about now. And I think the other part of this is Eli Drinkwitz has a level of control, hypothetically, power inside that state that really does matter. He leveraged his power, his position in that state to get NIL laws changed. He is not going to be able to do that in Florida, and he absolutely is going to have tons of more people to answer to at Florida. It's not to say that Florida is not the better job, and that's something I'll get to here in a second. It's just to say those two guys have very, very good situations right now. Florida is a little all over the place right now. I don't know if they'd be willing to hang it up where they're at and say, yeah, I'll sign on to this Florida program if there's not stability behind the scenes. So it's not to say Florida can't be an incredible job, and it's not to say, especially not to say, that Florida isn't one of those jobs that is probably better than Missouri or better than Ole Miss. It's just to say right now they're not operating at 100% capacity, and I think that's the big problem. You have a Florida job that is downright incredible. If you are operating the way that they are capable of operating— you have everything right there. You're going to have a great NIL fund, and maybe it's just you get the right head coach in there, all that stuff starts flowing in. Maybe that's really the only holdup. I tend to believe it's a little bit deeper than that, but possibly if you get the right guy, you can move forward. But at the end of the day, this right now, Florida right now, is not near where Florida can be and not near where they need to be if they want to pull in the guy that they want to pull in. So there's other guys that they can, absolutely. And Florida job is one of the best in the country, no doubt about it. I mean, top 12, top 10, however you want to cut it. 
the reality is right now, it's not near that. It's not at the place that it needs to be to pull a Lane Kiffin, to pull an Eli Drinkwitz. And now there's other options out there. Alex Golish at South Florida is absolutely incredible, although I think Florida would be a little bit scared to hire from the G5 ranks again. And then you have guys uh, like Glenn Schumann. You have guys like um, the UGA DC. You have guys like James Franklin that absolutely could be on in on this conversation. The problem is James Franklin, uh, whether it's James Franklin or Matt Rule or Eli Drinkwitz or Matt, Mike Gundy or Matt Cam whoever it is, all of those guys want to be playing in the playoff. All of those guys want to be coaching into December, into January. You're not going to be able to get anything done before then. And also, before then is early signing day. It's when the portal opens. And maybe for some of these coaches that you want after the portal closes because they might be coaching deep into this playoff run. So it's one of those things where Florida has a million different things they have to get over. They have to get over what's going on behind the scenes with their president and their AD that has to be fixed before this happens likely. They have to figure out a lot of the NIL structuring that has been a little bit out of whack right now and a lot of people are well ahead of them in. They also need to figure out just the scheduling of this all. It's an absolute nightmare to hire a coach in the month of December right now because there's too much going on. If you try to hire James Franklin and he's coaching through a playoff, He's not going to have conversations with you. Maybe you can get in the room with his agent, but the reality is this is a coach that has his first shot at a big-time win. He's not going to uh, go down to Gainesville, Florida and hear out a job offer, at least not in the short term. Now, he would at the end of the season, and then you could figure out where you stand, but the reality is the scheduling of all this makes it an absolute nightmare to make this higher, and there's a million different things that make it a nightmare. So the reality is Billy Napier is probably okay for the next little bit, and I don't really know how quickly that could change. Maybe if they get blown out this weekend against Mississippi State, people will just have no patience left, and they let him go, and they figure out what they need to do on the back end. But the reality is with recruiting and with all of this stuff baked into all of these conversations, there's not a lot to be done. If you want a Matt, if you want a Lincoln, or excuse me, if you want a Lane Kiffin, if you want a Matt Rule, if you want a Eli Drinkwitz, a James Franklin, you are going to have to wait a little bit. You're going to have to wait until the end of the year at the very least, and then maybe into the playoff a little bit. And you're going to miss out on recruiting. You're going to miss out on the portal. You're going to miss out on a million different things. This is none of this is to say that they absolutely should keep uh, Na Billy Napier. They probably shouldn't. He absolutely, I tend to believe he will be fired by the end of the year. I think they'll get someone else in there. But the reality is right now, Florida is not at a spot where they can just be pushing him out the door and saying, we'll figure it out on the back end because they don't have an interim. They don't really have an AD that they feel comfortable making this hire. They have an interim president. They have an NIL fund that is a little bit all over the place right now behind the scenes. And they have a lot of coaches that are really incredible, which means they're going to be coaching deep into the postseason. So there's just a million different hurdles for Florida to pull this off. And I think they're going to get a good coach at the end of this. I think they're going to be more than fine in this Billy Napier situation that has been eerily like the Tom uh, Herman situation at Texas, but I can get into that another time if you guys want. But it's one of those things that they will likely get rid of Billy Napier. I think they can get a really good coach in there. It is going to take them time. They have a ton of hurdles they have to get over before they can make that final great hire, and maybe it is Lane Kiffin. I'm a little bit skeptical of that, but maybe it is Lane Kiffin. Maybe it is Eli Drinkwitz. Maybe it is James Franklin, and that would be a great hire, I think, in all the circumstances. Maybe it's Marcus Freeman, who uh, I believe uh, Carl Reed threw out there, which I think would be a great hire as well. You're going to have to wait a while to get those guys. So Florida fans, just strap in a little bit. It's not to mean you know you don't have bright uh, days ahead of you. It doesn't mean there's not light at the end of the tunnel. It's just to say, as of right now, there's not many ways to get out of that tunnel. Until you have a, a lot of fixes in the back, in the behind-the-scenes game, you're going to have a lot of things that are just going to be frustrating for a little bit. But at the end of the day, you will probably get a new coach. You will probably be able to turn the page and move forward. It's just going to take a little bit longer than fans might like. But let's take our first break here, and when we come back, when we come back, we're going to talk about all the games that are going on this weekend that we haven't gotten a chance to touch on throughout the week, as well as the game that happened yesterday that did not go the way that I was going to thought that I thought it was going to go. So we'll break it down right after this. So stick with us. <laughs> 